clay was mined from pits along the Missouri River. The pits were well known and marked. Once the clay was collected, typically it would just be dug out of the pit and put into a large sack or a skin bag and be transported back to the village where it would be pounded into a powder. Once that was done, it was a wet clay, which was rolled into a cylinder. Starting with the thumb, the vessel was pinched into shape. You press the right hand from the interior Press the clay against the palm of the next of your left hand. This process continues for quite some time until the pot roughly begins to take shape. The basic tools used other than the hands, included a paddle. Among the people on the uh, Northern Plains, the Hidatsa, the Mandan, the Arikara, the Plains Apache, they would typically make their pots in this manner and they would use a stick with grooves cut in it like that, horizontally. They'd be pounded across and leave these nice vertical lines, which archaeologists call simple stamping. Another slightly different one is where these checks were cut into the paddle. The only other place that you find check stamp pottery in any frequency in the plains and surrounding regions is in Wyoming. This method of manufacturing pots is typically called a paddle and anvil. Paddle and an anvil. Among the Hadats and the Mandan and probably the Arika and Pawnee, the other plains village tribes, Pottery was produced at the household level. They didn't use paints or slips to decorate them. Many of these pots had vessel walls as thick as three, as thin as three millimeters. an average of under five millimeters. I mean, that's just incredibly thin. That's incredibly thin for wheel-made ceramics. Typically, once the pot was, was worked to this level, a cloth or piece of rawhide would have been wrapped around the rim that was wet or damp and it would be set in the shade. To dry for several hours at least. But once that pot was dried for several hours, it becomes stiff and that same process would carry on over several rounds. Now, to speed this up so we wouldn't have to film over three days. I've completed one pot. Now this pot is made from the exact same lump of clay as the one I just started with. I started this a couple of days ago and it's gone through several rounds 
of paddling and I wet a small stone which is held as the anvil on the interior Among the Mandan and Hadatsa, it was believed that the longer you paddled, the stronger the pot would be, and the less likely it would be to crack when it's fired. They would build a big bonfire, and they'd let it burn for quite some time until it built up a really thick bed of coals. And once it was burned down to just a thick bed of coals, they would smooth the coals out and they would place the pots right side up in the fire, right in the coals, and they would rake all the coals up around them. And according to the Hidatsa, it took many, many hours, but the pots would eventually turn red in the fire. And the fire would allow it to die down completely. And the pots were removed and they were coated with a starchy liquid that was left over from the uh, boiling of, of corn to make uh, well grits or corn mush. Unlike in the southwest where in other parts of the new world where corn was often ground into a flour that just wasn't the usual method. It would have been soaked in pots with an alkali solution and then soaked more to allow the corn to swell into hominy and then it was oftentimes pounded in a large mortar and pestle into a into a paste or a mush Oftentimes the exterior, the pot is smoothed down with a wet hand so that the check stamping is really hard to see. That's really quite common. This pot is a replica of a pot, a Central Plains tradition that probably dates to about 700 years ago. That's about all I had.